Associate Mr. Lamphere, unfortunately, again has been detained on another matter. I'll require more time to familiarize myself with this case. Continued until March 10th. This is the third postponement, and I still haven't gotten my TV back. I've been here all day. So have I, miss, and it's my day off. Hey, buddy, would you make a call for me? Oh, madam. Madam, would you dial 911 for me? Tell them I need a patrol car for Lieutenant Brock. I have dinner on the stove. Hey, kid. Fuck off, pig. All right, you make the call. Lieutenant Brock? Yeah. That kid that you busted last week for purse snatching? Uh-huh. The lady won't file a complaint and he's suing for false arrest. That figures. This is a dwarf orange tree, not a hat rack. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, the captain wants to see you. That's good. I want to see the captain.
of a movie is that? Where's the action? They won't settle for jokes upstairs. Who is that man? Lou Coburn, the Cobra. Suspected bookmaker, loan shark, extortionist. You took an envelope from that man. I sure did. This one. And when I got it, it had $15,000 in it, part of the loot from a bank job in Kearney, New Jersey. You took $15,000 from a hood? Not only that, they were marked bills. The Cobra was looking to bribe a cop to cover up a wire room. Harrigan in the U.S. Attorney's Office gave me the assignment. My last. Now, you're not going to blow a great police career on account of a little stupid... <laughs> It wasn't even me that was stupid. It was those clowns upstairs. Captain, these papers were time-stamped before I came in here. I quit before I was accused. You want to know something? I've been chasing creeps for 20 years, and I'm sick of it. That's the deal, huh? The short pension. You're going to end up being chief of security in a shoe factory. Yeah? Uh, you got a minute, Captain? Remember when I went west on the Gorman extradition? Yeah. I want to show you something I bought. My citrus ranch. Mine in the banks. I see. You get out there a lot? Nope. My money goes for improvements, not field trips. But my manager and I keep in close touch. Mr. Korngold's a wizard with oranges. He's an Indian. He came with a place. Korngold, the Indian. Ah, uh, Golden Corn. Arthur Golden Corn, that's the name. Now, now, you see the improvements there in grease pencil. Now, take a look at that porch. What a place to watch the sunset, huh? Place to watch the sunset. Mm-hmm. What are we standing here for? The bunco squad is down the hall. You, 20 years a detective, in line to make captain, off the force to raise oranges? You don't know pits from peel. I don't have to, but I know how to fold money in peace and quiet. Now, listen to me, Brock. You put on your papers tonight, don't bother changing your mind. You leave me short now, and I'll see to it that you never work another day for the department. Promises, promises. <laughs> Cash, I got something for you. The dwarf orange tree is yours. I'm going into the big time. I'll see you, Sarge. place we have to go through down to it's gonna be your last chance to see some hustle and bustle <laughs> open an empty will suit me fine no 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 mr brock what wrong pickup that one This? Yeah. But last year I sent you money for a new truck. Just in time. You should have seen the old one.
Brock? How come you got fired by the cops? You got it backwards, Arthur. I fired them. And you'd rather live out here? I'd rather live in a hollow log. <laughs> How did you learn about oranges, Arthur? Working for Mr. Powers. Yeah, that man knew oranges. How long did you work for him? Three years. Two droughts and a flood. Mm. He was only 53 when he died. Of all the work in malnutrition, Doc said. Well, no, not exactly malnutrition. He was okay for vitamin C. That whole year he died, he never caught a cold, not once. Of course, it was good weather. Yeah, that's what killed him in a way. Good weather killed him? When it's good weather, oranges are so cheap, you can't afford to hire pick labor. Oh. This year, oranges are bringing top dollar. Good. Only we haven't got any. We haven't? Well, yeah, but uh, not enough to sell. It takes water to get a crop. Well, last year, you wrote me that we had too much water. Well, it's true. See, too much water is bad for citrus. It's too little. See, it's floods it. And this year, water table's way down. Well, didn't I buy us a pump? Well, yeah, it worked as long as we paid our electric bills. Well, what happened to the cash reserve? Well, we need a new shed. I mean, you just can't throw fruit on the ground, give them the blue mold. They bruise if you look at them sideways. Oh. Here the citrus red. The spiders. Took every cent we had. Place to sit and watch the sunset. Mr. Brock, I felt bad when you wrote me that. Where the hell is my porch? Oh, well, now, Mr. Brock, you always sent the money along to the Crenshaw Ranch Management Company. Now, Smiley, that's Mr. Crenshaw. He always told me how to spend it, and it wasn't always spent on the right thing. So uh, I figured what you didn't know wouldn't hurt you. You'd have had a porch if you hadn't retired so soon. Citrus supposed to be black like this? They are if they've got the fungus. A cold glass of orange juice. That'll freshen you up. sweeter than ours. Swell. Hey, young Brock. Is that a shed? The shed? Well, that's right. 
You're picking up those farming terms real fast, Mr. That's Price. a new shed? And don't tell me I should have seen the old one. That is the old one. Well, I didn't say you got a new shed. What? Well, you paid for a new shed at the county citrus co-op. That's why we had to buy a new truck. You see, the accident wasn't my fault. And then the sheriff, well, he turned nasty. And then toward the end, it, uh... Come in the parlor. It's your juice. I think you'll find it nice and relaxing right here, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Well, now, that's what I like to see. Men working my land and working hard. Well, they're not working for us. What? For the sheriff. The sheriff? Well, not rid of the sheriff, either. The sheriff's dead. Just Rex Willis, the deputy sheriff. On my land? That is my land. Well, they're working on the sheriff's murder. The sheriff's murder? Well, yesterday, just over our border there. Oh, that'll be stretch. Arthur? Stretch Willis, Deputy Sheriff. Where you light them smudge pots, Mr. Brock, you make sure you turn that little knob on top clockwise. It is a frost dew. Are you, uh, are you the Brock, the detective? Ex-detective Arthur. Why can't you light the smudge pots? Well, uh, uh, because I'm taking them in for the sheriff's Take murder. Every three or four trees, you'll find the smudge Why pots. They're all fueled. Why are you taking them in? Well, uh, because, because he has uh, bad mouthed the sheriff ever since that truck knocked over that co-op shed, and because he swore this tribal oath of vengeance thing. You see, when the uh, sheriff wouldn't let the braves canoe in sacred lake, but mainly because the body, we found the body just yonder there, just off your property with. Golden Corn's arrow in it. So I'm afraid, Mr. Brock, you're going to need yourself a new ranch manager. Don't forget that smudging, Mr. Brock. Morning. Oh, good morning. Ellen Ashley, your next door neighbor. Oh. You're Mr. Brock? Yeah. Well, welcome. Thank you. I have quite a bit of livestock over on my place. They did an awful lot of coughing last night. Just the next time you burn smudge pots, be sure and turn them off when the wind changes. Oh, I'm awful sorry. I'm kind of new at this. I know. I hear that Arthur was arrested yesterday. Yeah. You'll be able to help him, of course. Me? Well, you are a policeman. Retired. Well, it must be obvious to you that that poor Indian didn't kill anybody. Ma'am, uh, if killers looked like killers, we wouldn't need cops. 
You mean you're just accepting his guilt like everybody else around here? No, I just mean it's none of my business. Well, I should have known that cops understand arrest, but not justice. Miss Ashley, I'm not a cop. I'm a rancher. From what I've seen, Mr. Brock, you're not much of a rancher either. I want you to remember that my place begins over yonder where the mucky brown becomes green. I retain the best lawyer in the county, and I'd like you to keep your pollution on the mighty lemon. The what? Local name for Great Western Citrus. Come on. Nice to have met you. Just the man I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, just between us cops, everybody knows that Arthur Goldencorn killed the sheriff. But uh, it's up to me to prove it, you see. And I got this whole town on my back. And I was wondering, if you had time, maybe you could come in and help me with some clues. No, 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 no. Not a chance, Stretch. I'm just a simple, tax-paying citizen. Matter of fact, I got a complaint of my own to make. What's that? Guy tried to stick me with this this morning on my own land. 5'11, 190, sandy haired, light complexion, square jaw, wearing a plaid shirt. Better check for prints. I'm awful sorry, Mr. Us Brock. citizens don't want sympathy, Stretch. We want action. You're a public servant. Yeah. And what I came down here for was to see my ranch manager. When are visiting hours? Oh, anytime. The door's always open. The door's always open? Yeah, yeah. Come on, I'll show you. It's the uh, second cell on the right, right there. from drying out while I figure out how to raise the money for the electric bill. Excuse me, Mr. Brock, could you please find me a lawyer? I'm asking you, Arthur, how do I stay in business without electricity? Well, you don't. I don't have a light cylinder test, and you get water trucking through that soil and fat. I mean, a couple of days, and those trees are dead, and they're not the greatest anyhow. You know, the mighty lemon is... I'm sorry. It's all right. I've heard the name before. How much do we owe the power company? $1,950. Will they take uh, 
one percent on account? No way. Yeah, you might try Smiley Crenshaw. He owes you something for selling you that place. And I've heard that he sometimes lends money at high rates to bad risks. That's me. I'll see you around, Arthur. Right. Don't forget about my lawyer. Sunshine City, stranger. I'm Jay Smiley Crenshaw, the fairy godfather that brought this dream to reality. Brock, I've got my dream. Great Western Citrus, remember? Mr. Brock. <laughs> yeah. A long time no see. It sure is. <laughs> uh, uh, meet, meet my foreman, uh, Jack Dawson. Oh, yeah. How about a cold tonic? Yeah, thanks. Mr. Crenshaw, I'd like to talk to you. Well, you just step inside here, out of the glare. Uh, I wouldn't do that, Mr. Brock. That's how I got this necklace. Not too sturdy. Mr. Crenshaw, I've, uh, I've seen my place, and it's a disaster. I have got a receipt for every penny of yours I spent. We just had bad luck, that was all. Well, no use crying over spilled orange juice. I need some help. And you heard I make distressed loans, huh? Well, there's a limit to even a distressed loan, and your mighty lemon is over the limit. No offense. Oh, have a heart, Smiley. Anybody owns that spread needs friends. Driving nails make you some sort of a financial wizard, huh? No, Mr. Lemon, the way things are, I need to borrow money not to lend it. Customers? Those? No. I'd be over there selling, wouldn't I? They're here to get their money back. Last week, it was here comes Swifty. He couldn't write contracts fast enough. Sense of murder, nothing. Ah, oh, here comes some customers. Excuse me. There are lots of archers around here, Mr. Dawson. Yeah. Just about everybody. Kind of like surfing in Hawaii. Yeah. Of course, lately, you can't get anybody to admit they even own a bow. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, did you try the bank, Mr. Brock? No, I'm way behind on my note. Well, you know, generally, that's the best time to borrow money when you owe it. <laughs> Ask for a fellow named Cuspis. Cuspis? Nice fella. OK, thanks a lot. You bet. Bank said I'd find Mr. Cuspis in here. For a loan, huh? Best time to eat him is at lunch. Oh, I'm Sam Wong. How are you, Sam? Follow me. Thanks. You know, I could eat Chinese six times a week. <laughs> the only Chinese dish we got around here is wonton soup. Can. Mr. Cuspis. Thanks. You bet you. Gustus? Yeah. I'm Brock, owner of Great Western Citrus. Well, I've been looking forward to meeting you. Care for a little lunch? No, thank you. No. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Cuspis, I, uh, I don't know how much you know about Great Western Citrus. Why don't you just make that joke? Joe. Well, I know that you need an extension on your mortgage. And I know you need to get that power back. Then you also know I've got no security. Now, we're neighborly folks out here, Mr. Brock. Neighbors don't set too much store by security. All we want to know is that a man's reliable. Neighborly. You 
you an able man, Mr. Brock? <laughs> well, I'd like to be. You read the papers? Those from all over the county. Take the wire service and everything. Mm -hmm. Each one of them's got a story in it about the bow and arrow murder. Now, that's the sort of thing that'll ruin any town, Mr. Brock. It'll kill Grove City if it keeps up. Now, our land boom is just beginning. Yeah, I saw it. Sunshine City. You want to know what people are really buying, Mr. Brock? Peace and quiet. No crime, law and order. Now, I'm going to ask you, Mr. Brock. Are they going to want to buy around the town that the only thing they've heard about that town is on account of a murder? Are they? Now, it's got to be cleared up. Now, Stretch Willis, fine boy. Indian threatens the sheriff. Sheriff gets killed by the Indian's bow and arrow. Stretch has got good enough sense to go out and pick up that Indian, but prove it. That takes a professional. Mm-hmm. I give you golden corn, you give me the loan. That the deal? Well, we don't have to put it quite like that, do we? You need help, we need help. An investigation, that's, uh, that's all we're asking for. No telling where an investigation might lead, Mr. Cuspis. Well, it'll lead to the Indian. I'll just drop by the bank later on. Fix up that loan for you. I'll see you. Get your loan? Well, you should have been a cop. Simple. You need money, town needs a fall guy. What makes you so sure Golden Corn didn't do it? Because I know him. I also know how this town feels about Indians. Oh. Well, we have the same problem in New York, Miss Ashley. And uh, lots of bleeding hearts who say that if a suspect is a member of an oppressed minority, he's automatically not guilty. Only sometimes he is guilty. Now, the best thing you can do for Arthur is get him a lawyer. You said you know the best one in the county. I'm afraid that's me. You? Yes, only I'm a real estate lawyer. Arthur needs a criminal lawyer. Oh, it's too tough for you, huh? Well, I guess it is kind of an unpopular case. Nice to see you again, Miss Ashley. Morning. Morning, stranger. So then, uh, what do you got in the line of work clothes? All the latest stuff. Go on inside and browse around. You ain't obligated to buy anything. Okay, thanks. I tell you? No, I'm just New York. Hey, you're looking like a rancher now, Mr. Brown. Fine. Now teach me how to be one. Sure. Yeah, thanks for the lawyer. What lawyer? Miss Ashley. She's trying to spring me. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, that's my end of our deal. Now, how about yours? Hmm? The electric power's coming on. What do we need to know? Everything will work. The pump, the heater, hot water heater, the lights, the toaster. Only... Only what? Well, you see, I rewired the place myself. Christmas tree style, no two at once. One goes, they all go. Use the fan while the lights are on. They all go. Just like that. That's just swell, Arthur. Well, all right, I've got a couple of questions I want to ask you about your problem. You're going to work on the case? Yeah, I guess so. What's this tribal oath you took about the sheriff? Oh, that oath's just words. It's sacrifice of life, it says. You see, when my father died, I inherited the title. Protector of the Sacred Lake. On tribal land. I swam it as a kid. Canoed it, knew every rock in it, and every story the old people told. Twenty years ago, they put it in the municipal water system. They broke a treaty. Then last month, the sheriff, he stopped the canoe ceremony. My tribe said I should do something, being protector. And what did you do? I talked to the sheriff. And what did you talk about? Did you threaten him? You bet I did. Well, that is just great, Arthur. Good luck. Mr. Brock? What? Would you stop by Doc Waters' office and uh, tell his nurse, name's Alma Gam, that I can't make it tonight? Yeah, okay. Alma Gam? She's a fine widow lady, Alma. 
You know, a woman who's not spoken for in these parts is mighty scarce, and I must pecan pies. Well, anyway, I'm glad you're back to being a detective. You might not be, Arthur. These are Arthur's bow and arrows, Your Honor. We concede that point. But we maintain that somebody stole Arthur's arrows and that he fired the one that killed the sheriff with another bow. Miss Ashley, save it for the trial. This is just an informal hearing, and I got to get back to my store. Your Honor, Stretch hasn't even filed a complaint. Until he does, Arthur is entitled to bail. That's Section 712A. Uh, I'm afraid she got us there, Stretch. Are you going to turn a killer loose, Judge? Well, the law is the law. In the application of Arthur Golden Corn, bail has been set at the sum of one hundred thousand dollars. That's excessive. That's unreasonable. Well, ma'am, you go get yourself another judge to reduce it. Hold it, John. Take care of this stuff, Fred. contempt of court. It's nothing of the sort, Your Honor. It's just the defense showing that you don't have to be an Indian to kill with a bow and arrow. I knew Arthur was in jail. Well, who in this town doesn't? Well, I wanted to see you anyway, Mrs. Gamble. Alma. Alma. Hi, Alma. Am I late? Doc's waiting for you, Mr. Dawson. How are you, Mr. Dawson? Oh, hi, Mr. Brock. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Doc's going to take your collar off today. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. When they brought him in here with that neck, they took a double dose of sedative to hold him down till Doc came. Uh -huh. He was delirious. Say, uh, how bad is that injury? You mean, could he pull a bow? <laughs> Morbid curiosity, occupational disease of cops. Could he? Not a chance. Would you like to see the x-ray? No, 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 no. I'll take your word for it. Well, what was it you did come to see me about, Mr. Brock? I'd, uh, I'd like to ask some questions about Golden Corn. First question, was I with Arthur the night of the murder? No. Second question. Would I say I was with Arthur? If I thought it would do any good, I'd say I was with him from dusk until dawn and hang my reputation. Third question. Did Arthur kill the sheriff? Not a chance. Why? Because you're friends? Well, I have friends I couldn't vouch for, but not Arthur. Revenge from ambush is not his style. You're lucky to know him. He's a rare man. Most murderers are. Mr. Brock, you know, there is something I have been wondering about. What's that? Well, the day Smiley Crenshaw brought Mr. Dawson in delirious, uh -huh. it may have absolutely nothing to do with all this. What are you doing, lady? Well, what's Excuse me. Truck we loaded with feed sacks so far today with Jay Kinkley. Where'll I find him? Oh, he's a hired hand over at El Rancho Pequeño. 
straight on out about two miles. You'll see the sign. Okay, thanks a lot. Looking for something, Mr. Brock? No, I'm just being neighborly. Hey, that's very good shooting. Well, archery is a popular sport in these parts. Or was, till the murder. Sometimes I use it to work off my frustrations. You know, you've got a very pretty place here. We feature livestock. Soil's not too good for citrus this side of the hill. Now she tells me. Is there a tour? You like? I'd like. Thank you. Wasn't easy to find you. I'm used to neighbors on a street. We're backdoor neighbors. Place runs on a bit. I raise quarter horses. Yes, so. And Mr. Brock, you're not being neighborly, you're snooping. <laughs> Frankly, yes, I am. Well, if it's Harmful to my client, you're not welcome. Say, what is it with you and that Indian? All Indians. Legacy from my father. He built this place on the shoulders of cheap Indian labor. I'm giving a little back. Would you feel better if I was here because you're a suspect? Oh? Am I? Got an alibi for the night of the murder? No. You're a suspect. These are my prize Hereford bulls. Isn't that what they call policemen, bulls? We've worked our way down in the barnyard. Excuse me. Pulled a knife on me this morning. Did you? Well, see, I'm new here, mister. And I saw this fella nosing around down where his ranch joins onto yours. And I remembered that's where the sheriff got killed down near there. And so I guess I got scared. I was only trying to protect myself and your ranch. You're well, fired. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want it on my head that Jake's out of work. Well, if that's what you want, and if Jake promises to behave... I will, Miss Ellen. So help me, I will. Thanks, mister. I appreciate it. Hey, Jake. What's this? I don't know. I've never seen it before. It's a piece of that paper you had in the grove. I hate to say this, mister, but... you're mistaken. 
Am I? Look at this. For a minute, I thought I knew. Jake, Mr. Brock's a lot more forgiving than I'd be. You step out of line one more time. No, I won't. I promise, Miss Ellen. You won't regret it. Thanks a lot, mister. Are there separate rules for Indians? About what? Attacking people. How is it Jake doesn't go into the cell next to Golden Corn? Because Jake knows something and isn't talking. The way to learn from him is to watch what he does. If he's in jail, he can't do anything. Mr. Brock? What? You're not at all sure that Arthur did it. I'm not sure of anything. As long as you still have an open mind, there's someone I'd like you to meet if you don't mind taking a short drive. In my truck, no. In yours, okay, let's go. Jake is an honorary title. We have little of other things, so much of honor. Arthur did not seek the title. The tribe may be a burden to him, but his father had been protector and Arthur has dispatched the office, as well as any who hungered for it. Well, uh, what about the oath to protect the lake at sacrifice of life? The symbolic death would be the protectors, and the other would be an offense to the sacred lake, which is a force for life. I see. Arthur Golden Corn is incapable of taking a life. Has the offending arrow been dusted for prints? It has, and there are none. Come any time. Thank you so much, Chief Hathaway. Even this one, whose father paid Indians the lowest wages in the county. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chief. Alma? Sheriff's office. No, Stretch Willis isn't here. Oh, Mr. Brock, he's out on a call. As soon as you reach him, tell him to get out to Alma Gam's house. She's been murdered. Ashley around? No, uh, 
She got into town. Didn't say when she's going to be back. Okay, thanks. Say, uh, sure hope you can clear that golden corn. I like him. Well, he is cleared. How'd you do that? I didn't. The murderer did. He just killed again, exactly the same way. Oh. Well, uh, how does that clear the Indian? Well, Jake, there are very few alibis that are unbreakable. Being in jail when a crime is committed is one of them, and Golden Corn's in jail. Oh, yeah, sure. I, uh, I forgot about that. Golden corn. He's out free as a bird. I put my ranch up for bail. And when did this happy event take place? Early this morning. He's probably over at your place by now. Well, isn't it wonderful? Fantastic. <laughs> I'm out! Yeah, I heard. Where you been? Oh, walking. All the way from town? Yeah. It's great to be on the outside again. Smelling the grass, the wind, the trees. Here, yeah, you'll never guess the first thing I did. Let me try. You headed for some place you thought about all the time you were in jail. Yeah, that's right. But Alma wasn't home. Come on, how did you know? Just a hunch. Did you go in? Well, the door was open. You know, that's funny. There were some pies baking, but Alma wasn't around. Why didn't you wait? Uh, it doesn't look good for an Indian to hang around somebody's house when they're out. Besides, I figured I'd see you later. I'm afraid you won't, Arthur. Oh, no! Where you been all day? What happened? You were gone when the power came on. Serge must have knocked out the pump's automatic cutoff. You're under arrest, Arthur. What for? Wait a minute, Stretch. Arthur, Alma's dead. She was killed with one of your arrows. <sighs> Mr. Brock, get that pump off. Remember? Too much water is bad for citrus. Okay. Let's go, Arthur. Yeah. Morning, Mr. Brock. Hi. You having a nice day? Beautiful. Hey, you got a wrench? In the glove department. Thanks.
hope I'm not interfering with your chores. Not at all. Not at all. Glad to have a little help. I followed Stretch on out here. I figured he's going to arrest that Indian fella again for the new murder. <laughs> that uh, just about wraps up this mess, don't it? Not in my book. Look, oh, Rock. We, we figured you was going to be a good neighbor. Joe Cuspers and the merchant and the whole town. Looking forward to fine, upstanding law and order man like yourself in this community. I was looking forward to it myself. Oh, you're from the big city. You don't know what it's like to have bad neighbors, where folks have to depend upon neighbors for, for credit, and for fire prevention, for food, even. Oh, I know Joe Cuspus has asked you to investigate this murder, but no need to investigate it any longer, is there? Oh, yes, there is. Like what? Well, how's this, for starters? Oh, you've been this stationary from the sheriff's office, huh? What about? That's my question. I found it in your glove compartment. Oh, well, all right. You see, uh, real estate men need to have lots of letters of references. The sheriff, he used to do mine for me, like Mr. Crenshaw, has been in this community for the past 12 years selling real estate and is a fine, upstanding member of the community, and so forth. The sheriff got tired of writing my letters for me, so he gave me these uh, letterheads and said, go ahead and do them yourself. All right. Possibly illegal, but uh, OK for now. Sweet. Well, you just be a good neighbor, and the whole town is yours. Mr. Crenshaw. Huh? Here's your wrench. Oh. Thank you, neighbor. <laughs> uh. I wonder how you turn them dumb things off. I can. Oh, I just can. Excuse me, is this an attorney-client conference? She wants my trial moved out of town. A change of venue is your only chance. Everybody in this town says you did it. I live here, Miss Ashley. This is my home. You're a very stubborn man. Right. All right. I'll go up to the county seat and try for a writ of habeas corpus. I'm on very shaky legal grounds. But Judge Leggett once made a pass at me. He was an instructor of mine at law school. Hey, that's great. I slapped his face. Oh. Good luck. Thank you. Lawyers. One of the reasons I quit being a cop. Here, better eat this before it gets cold. Thanks. I'll see you later, Arthur. Good news, Mr. Brock. What's that? No frost tonight. You won't have to smudge. Won't have to irrigate either. <laughs> yeah. Morning, boss. How are things going at the Great Western today? I got your note that you were over here. I can't get the truck started. I'll give you a hand as soon as I finish these chores for Miss Ashley. The least I can do after all the work she's done is set me free. Yeah. I'm afraid she might slap that judge again. Wind up in jail with you. <laughs> hey, where's that guy, Jake? I don't know. Miss Ashley said he just plain up and disappeared. Yeah? Yeah.
Hey, Arthur, I think this horse is hurt. Blood. Oh. Even Stretch wouldn't believe it was the horses. They might as well get back to the jail before he comes for me. I'll give you a lift. Never mind. I know the way. me that uh, you're still not convinced the Indian did it. That's right, Mr. Cuspis. Stretch is. Aren't you, son? I didn't say that. You said Arthur didn't have an alibi, and I agreed. That's all. Stretch, you're a police officer. You shouldn't be discussing this case. You got your desk, Stretch. I'm sorry, Mr. Brock. It's not entirely his fault. Before you came in, everybody was on his back because the Indian hadn't been brought to trial. You think he's innocent, and we think he's guilty. It's a free country, man. I know he's innocent. How do you know? Because of something Jake said just before he died. We heard he was dead when you found him. Not quite. Just what did Jake say? Excuse me, I've got to take this over to Arthur. <laughs> as much luck as the rancher. Oh. Ah. What did Jake say before he died? Well, the tom-toms work pretty good around here, don't they? I guess it's the Indian influence. Any idea why my hired hand was killed? Remember this? Yes. You know, I'm still sure I've seen this before. You have. It's part of the sheriff's emblems on all the police cars and the sheriff's stationery. Jake had a sheet of that stationery when we fought. Of course, that explains everything. He got it out of my orange tree. Well, how did he get up there? Try this. Suppose the sheriff has something on Mr. X. He writes that something down on a sheet of his stationery, but he doesn't tell anyone about it. Now, he shows it to Mr. X out here. Now, Mr. X kills the sheriff to shut him up. But he can't find the paper in the dark because the wind has blown it into one of my trees. Now, Jake finds it by accident the morning I jumped him. Clear as mud? Jake reads it and decides to blackmail the killer. I told you, you should have been a cop. But why did the sheriff meet the killer here? Because the sheriff had blackmail in mind, too. Oh. Well, don't tell me Alma Gam was a blackmailer. Well, I don't know how she fits in. Well, I have a feeling you will. But you'll figure out the whole thing. As my closest neighbor, you'll be the first to know. I'll drop over and say goodbye. Bye. Let's face it, this place is a bust. I'm no rancher. I'll always be two notes back of the bank. I'm getting out of here. Back to New York? Maybe. Police department? Never. Funny. I could never leave the ranch. Oh, yes, you could. What if Golden Corn jumps bail?
Mr. Cuspus. <laughs> Come to check on your collateral? Oh, I was worried after you let the whole town know that Jake talked before he died. I see. You're riding shotgun for me, huh? Well, I thought you were in bed. I, I, I didn't realize it was a decoy for the killer. Oh, I guess I spoiled that for you. Maybe not. Well, now, if somebody was out there, they'd be gone by now. Unless you're the killer. a high school kid who understood spectral analysis or could say it. Tommy Stats understands everything. No, sir, I'm not wrong. So that means that Golden Corn fired all the arrows, right? That's a value judgment. The spectrograph showed that the three murder arrows had the same bow deposits in the knots as Golden Corn's bowstring. In other words, all of the arrows had been fired with Golden Corn's bow. That doesn't say who fired them. Well, isn't it possible another bow could have fired them? Spectroscopic analysis is reliable because everything leaves traces on whatever it touches. Those arrows were never fired from any other bow than golden cords. Hey, say that again, son. Oh, come on, Mr. Brock. You say no, somebody come on, say it again, bow? son. Spectroscopic... No, 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 that last part you said, the last part, son. No other bow ever fired those arrows. Mm. Call. You had one, Mr. Brock. Boston? Massachusetts State Police. They said yes. They had a recent inquiry from Grove City about one Oscar Brennerman. He's wanted in Massachusetts, murder one, prints and description to follow. Thank you. There's no Oscar Brennerman around here. Oh, yes, there is. Come on. Stretch, in two days, I'm going to be a former resident, and you're going to be the sheriff. Better if you make the arrest. I'll be your backup. All right, thanks. I'll tell you who, how, and why. Where are your felony complaints? Oh, right up here. There you go. How did I solve the case? Well, start with a bow and arrow. We had that all wrong. I got enough for a warrant. I'll go down to the store, get one from the judge. I'll be right back. Maria, turn Golden Corn loose, and when Mr. Brock comes back, you tell him to wait here for me. Hi, sir! Hurry, Sonny. I'm in a big hurry. How you doing? Tell me where Smiley went, Mr. Brenneman. Well, he went into town for... <laughs> My name ain't Brenneman. Yes, it is. And you're under arrest. What for? Murder. All three murders. Are you kidding? Me? 
Kill three people with a bow and arrow? Oh, you ought to check Doc Waters' x-ray. See, I couldn't move this left hand up over my head for a week. Not a bow and arrow. Arrow. Three arrows and three bodies. Same angle, same degree of penetration. You know, it only takes one arm to stab a man. With a knife or an arrow. What was it back in Boston, huh? Knife? Who said I've ever been there? Nobody had to. See, you had said uh, tonic. It's called pop or soda, except in New England. You also said, uh, here comes Swifty, which is dog racing talk, New England dog racing. I never said that to you. It was Brock that figured it out, wasn't it? Come on, let's go. Wasn't it? Yeah, he helped out some. I suppose you've been taking your bows all over town, ain't you? No, as a matter of fact, you're the first to know. I said, let's go, come on. You and Brock are the only ones that know, huh? I said, let's go. The old farm labor camp out near the reservation? Well, what the devil are you doing out there? I blew it, Mr. Brock. I figured it was my job, but I blew it. He rushed me and I shot him. Is he dead? Yes, sir, he's dead all right. I'm scared, Mr. Brock. You know how things are for cops. Are you sure that we've got a solid case on this guy? Now, just calm down. I'll be right there. Thanks, Mr.
How do you feel? Lousy. You lost some blood? Mm. Or a stretch. You'll be okay. Took a bullet in the leg and hit his head falling. Knocked himself unconscious. What about Dawson? Just a matter of time. Highway patrols got every road out of the valley blocked. How'd I get here? Indians brought you. Called me. I shoot them all away. You need rest. Golden corn around? Somebody said he was heading for Miss Ashley's house when he got out of jail. If that starts bleeding again, give me a call. Okay, thanks, Doc. Now, there's only one bullet left in this gun. Anybody tries to stop me, she gets it. Now put your hands up and turn around. Well, I'm trying to call the Rancho Pequeno, but I'm getting nothing. Out of order? All right. Dawson, he had a gun to Miss Ashley's head. Which way? Had to be the mountains. He took horses. There's no highway patrol up there. Let's go. Once more, you get the last bullet, lady. Come on. Sure we're on the right trail. Never was much of a trail, reader, but this one ends at the Sacred Lake. You can't cross it on horse. Good. Not so good. Our ceremonial canoe's there. You can use it. Well, then what? Then over the other side of the mountain. Unless the state road steals a car, he's gone. Kill Alma. Well, she told me Dawson was delirious when they brought him in. He must have babbled something that made her suspicious. She obviously told the sheriff. I think she was gonna tell me that day I ran after Jake in the truck. Looks like we missed the boat. I know a shortcut, but we'll have to go on foot. That'll bring us in front of him. If he sees us, he might kill her. What if he just sees me?
Why did you have to fall in the water? Now we have to have a three-day purification ceremony. It takes money. What? The sacred lake. Remember? Oh, yeah. Dawson, I got three counts of murder, one on you, and one count of kidnapping. You don't have to say a word, Mr. Dawson. He has to advise you of your rights. Lawyers. It's too bad you're gonna miss the purification ceremony. Lots of fire water. Sorry, Arthur. Sounds taking the sacred lake out of the water supply system. Right past Miss Ashley. He's gonna take the treaty to court. That's nice. I'm telling you, things are gonna be different around here. I'm glad. Mr. Brock? Are you sure you don't want to hang around here a while? Nope. The sooner I get back to New York, the better. Come on, let's go pick up my stuff. Okay. You're in charge till I find a buyer, Arthur. Whatever you say, Mr. Brock. If the buyer's got any sense, he'll keep you on. But if he's got any sense, why would he buy? There's my porch. Folks shipped in the labor. Yeah? Right. Yeah, and Smiley only marked up the lumber, 5%. Yeah, right. Hi, Rock. Judge. Hi. Hi. Mr. Crenshaw. I do, neighbor. Justice. Rock, welcome home. Well, isn't this something? When you're leaving. Let you know as soon as the sun sets. I want to see it just once from my own porch. Yeah, looks like he's gonna stay. Till the rain starts. Then he finds out about the roof.